Hey everyone, Richard Robbins here. What I want to talk to you about today is how to have a pricing conversation with a potential seller or have a price adjustment conversation with a seller. We all understand one of the most difficult conversations you have, other than probably your commission, is going to be what price to list a home at. Now, I understand you've probably shown them comparables, you've shown them homes that are for sale, and you've shown them homes that have sold, but have you shown them the percentage of their chance of selling? Let me show you what I mean. Now, if you follow me, you understand that I do market updates, and we always talk about months of inventory, but I want to take this to a whole new level. So let me take you through the scenarios to help you understand this. So let's say in your market, and all the numbers are going to be different, but at the end of the month, whatever month we're in, you had 5,000 active listings. And let's say what you did is you sold 2,500 homes. Now keep in mind, these are active, not new listings. And you sold 2,500 homes. That means you have what we call two months of inventory. Very easy number to figure out. All you do is divide the smaller number into the bigger number. You got two months of inventory. Now, if I have two months of inventory, what is the chances of a listing selling? It's 50%, isn't it? It's got to be 50%. Because to get that number, all you do is you take the big number and divide it into the small number, and that will give you 50%. So that means with two months of inventory, you have a 50% chance of selling, sorry, but you also have what? You've got a 50% chance of not selling. That's right. Interesting, right? So now, let's look at the next scenario. Let's say active listings in scenario two, we get 5,000 listings, the same number, active listings. We sold 1,250. That means we have four months of inventory because we divide the sales into 5,000. And then what we do is we divide the 5,000 into the sales and it gives us 25%. So that means that we have a 25% chance of selling every month if we have four months of inventory. But it also means what? It means we have a 75% chance in that particular month of not selling. You all with me so far? Let's go a little further. Scenario number three. You get 5,000 active listings. You have 625 sell. We divide 625 into the big number, and we get eight months of inventory. Now, if you get eight months of inventory, then what we do is we take the big number and divide it into the small number, and that gives us a percentage. With eight months of inventory, you stand every month at 12.5% chance of selling, which also means you stand an 87.5% chance of not selling. Now, let's talk about prices going up, prices going down, balanced market. You've heard me say before that if you've got four to six months of inventory, you're in a balanced market. If we're sitting with eight months of inventory, which right now, by the way, there's, there's, many, there's many markets that are sitting around there, we got eight months of inventory. If we moved into buyer market territory where prices are softening because above six, prices are going to start to soften, and you stand an 87.5% chance of not selling. You with me? We come back here. If we have two months of inventory, this is an extremely hot market right here. Prices are going to be going up. So that means that two up to four is going to be what? Strong market. Four to six is going to be balanced. And above six, we're moving into buyer market territory. Now, can you imagine having a conversation with a seller about these numbers? Because you can show them the listings, which is good. You've got to establish the right price. And you can also show them the sales, because it's good to see what homes are selling for. But let's say we're sitting right here and you've got four months of inventory in your market. And it doesn't matter what the numbers are. You might have 500 listings and maybe 250 sales. All you got to do is go to your local board. You can look up these numbers. And at the end, I'm going to give you three ways to make this really work. But you're having a conversation right now, and the conversation goes like this. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, I appreciate the opportunity to be here today, right? I brought you the comparables, the homes that have sold, the homes that are for sale. Here's what we know. In our market right now, we got four months of inventory, show them the numbers. That means 25% are selling. That means 75% are not selling on a monthly basis. What our job is, is to establish a price that will cause your home to be the one and four they're going to sell in the next 30 days if you want to sell in the next 30 days. Imagine saying that. That's a whole different position, isn't it? Now, how do you make this effectively work? Number one, is you've got to make sure you're talking about a micro market. So let's say there's a condominium building. 
you need to figure out the numbers in that building. You can't use the numbers of the whole market because they're going, oh, no, you know, my place is different. You know, this is all of whatever city you're in. You've got to break it down to a geographical area, if it's detached or semi-detached, or a building, if it's this particular condo building. So you, they can see these are the numbers for their building. So that's number one. Number two, you show them the numbers. You don't just tell them the numbers. You've got to take a printout from your real estate board or go online with them and show them the actual numbers. And number three, to make it work, they got to be motivated to sell. Because if they're not motivated to sell, if you think about it, they don't care. They're going, I don't care if I sell it or not. Put it on at this price. If it sells, it sells. If it doesn't, it doesn't. And guess what? You and I both know it's not going to sell if you're sitting in one of these two markets. If it's overpriced, you spend a whole bunch of money, you spend a whole bunch of time, and you don't get paid for it. It makes no sense. So they have to be a motivated seller. They have to seriously, on a scale of 1 to 10, be a 7.5 or above before they're going to look at this information and truly buy into it. If they're not motivated, they might believe it's true. However, they don't care. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Remember, everybody, it's a beautiful life. Make it count.